No, me, bro. If I'm playing Overwatch, there's one guy I'm always playing Overwatch with. The number one guy, Sir Vesington, bro. Hello, Sir Vesington. How are we doing? Hello. Classic Hello. Overwatch guy, Sir Vesington. Uh, the OG. The o I literally don't think I have done a single Overwatch stream without you. I think you've literally been on every Overwatch stream. So. I think there might have been one. Doesn't count. Maybe. Vez wasn't there? Doesn't count. Not a real Overwatch stream. <laughs> Fair enough. But already. Uh... Let me switch this over. All right, so I'm interested in this stuff. I mean, I saw, I saw a TikTok of uh, Flats talking about some of the stuff. I didn't like watch the whole thing because I kind of wanted to like be a little unspoiled about. I mean, we knew most of the stuff because we saw the the thing. Um, yeah, the update to the competitive season over the last eight seasons. We've had some big updates coming. Yeah, so they're going to change the way that the whole. This one I I didn't I didn't see this information, but like how it's actually gonna like go or whatever. So one piece of feedback we're gonna just say. The one piece. One piece. The one piece is real. <laughs> dude, they put fucking Luffy in uh in Overwatch, dude. Hell yeah. He actually would go kind of hard, dude. Luffy on fucking Widowmaker when she uses the grapple hook. It's actually just a stretchy arm. <laughs> Competitive updates originally worked to provide updates. Uh, I'm trying to see where the where the fuck does this sentence actually start? Stop being yapping and start being real shit. Uh, with the goal to provide greater transparency in each individual match, we're going back to updating your rank after every match and showing you how much progress you gain or lose between each skill division. So that's pretty good. I mean, it kind of sucked in Overwatch One because it's like you would see how much you lost and that would kind of like hurt more but seeing how much you gain is like pretty fire like that that always feels good yeah i mean um, honestly the the system of like of like seeing it every especially when it was uh when overwatch 2 released it was every 7 games it wasn't even every 5 games yeah they change it to fucking five later on. And then, I mean, well, now you get, like, if you win or you lose a game, it'll show you, like, the picture, and it'll show you, like, the character, and it'll say, like, win or loss, or... Actually, no, it only shows you the wins. It doesn't actually show you the losses. It's just that if you lose, nothing showed up on that screen. Yeah. I kind of like that, that system. It was kind of cool looking, because you could, like, see all the characters you played. Because it would be funny, because then when I would rank up on, like, Tank or whatever, you would see that literally every game I just played Ramatra the whole time. <laughs> I never switched no matter what. And I would still win every time, so. Uh, okay. What are we looking at here? We're also displaying modifiers that affected your last match below the rank progression bar. Some modifiers help provide transparency in the matchmaking for each match, like getting a boost when you defeat a team that was more favored to win. What is, What does more favored to win mean? Are they not going to... Are they going to put us against teams that they expect us to lose against so that we're underdogging? Because that's kind of fucked up. Or is it just a random ass slot machine when the game starts? It's just going to eeny meeny miny mo a team and <laughs> fucking pick somebody. Uh, uh, maybe it's like when, uh, for example, it's like a capture the point um, um. and then payload. It's like the hybrid mode. And for example, like, they fucking full held you. You didn't even get to touch the point or, like, cap it, basically, at all. Mm. And then the game is like, okay, you're probably... The like the likelihood of you losing is really high. And then you win it somehow. Like, you full hold them. Mm. That's so true. they're like, yes, okay, okay. You, did a, you did great. You're gonna, you know... More of a reward for not giving up, I guess. Yeah. Is, yeah. I can respect that. I can respect that. One thing I really like about Dota is Dota doesn't have a surrender option. Like if you want to, mm. if you want to give up and sit in base in AFK, you could. You're just gonna get reported by like everybody. But there's no like, okay, this game is over. Just hit the button. Unless you're like a full stack. If you're a full five stack, then you can all type GG and the game will end. But <laughs> for random cues, I don't think there's a way to surrender. And I've been, I've been playing since 2014, so I think I would have figured something out if there was a way to do it. But not giving up is always fun. 
It always sucks when you got somebody who just doesn't even bother trying anymore. Um, I mean, I've been guilty of that myself. There have been games where I'm like, fuck it, I don't even care about trying anymore. It's already over. But Yeah. It's it's nice that there's, like, a reward for continuing to try. So, like, the desire to, to keep playing is, like, still pretty high. And that'll be good for a team-based game, obviously. Uh, while other modifiers show if your rank is calibrated, like, going on a huge win streak, provi- proving you belong in a higher rank... Feedback is a driving force behind these changes, and we want to hear your thoughts on competitive play now that you'll have more context for each game. How much do you think they're actually going to listen to the thoughts, though? That's the big question here. Uh, I'm thinking not I mean, much. <laughs> I mean, technically this thing is like was caused by them like listening to everything. I guess that's true, yeah. I mean, well, they're probably gonna listen. They'll listen to like the higher, higher level players. I don't think. Sorry, anybody watching who's uh, stuck in bronze, silver. I don't think they're listening to you when you complain that blank character is too hard to kill or whatever. Uh, I don't think they care about that. But they do. I do think it'll be like a team balance thing, maybe. I mean, yeah, the people who really play the game will maybe get listened to. But supposedly. Um, you're gonna be able to five stack in ranked in like the higher, um, higher rank lobbies. Huh. Because right now you can only duo queue. Interesting. Okay, I see. I didn't even know that. I really don't. I don't. I'm not ranks, sure but... because mm-hmm. I thought I think that was like a rumor. So gotcha. I don't know if it if it's like confirmed. Okay, I mean I I barely play ranked. I... I, the system was kind of boring, and it playing ranked solo queue is not really super fun. But tell me about it. Oh yeah, because it's like all you did for the last season. I mean, yeah. I do. I was thinking we could play a little bit of ranked tonight because I do kind of want to try and get a golden gun before they fucking steal them away. Which spoilers is a thing that we'll yeah. be talking about in a second. <laughs> like four days. Yeah, but I don't. I don't. I don't play a lot of comp, so I don't know how much I'm actually gonna get to it. So I do want to grind it out. But uh, how many comp? Comp points do you have? Right I think it's now? like 2,300 or something like that. You get like 25 per game. I okay. Think. Well, I might take a bit, but... Anyway. I don't know if, if it's like more if you lose or if you win or something. You would have to play it all day and night, and then you would get it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, so, you know, I'll play as much as I can now, and then uh, we'll we'll figure it out later, I guess. But I do, I do want to play a little bit. Right. Dang, bro, I don't want to grind. No, it's because I'm plat and I don't want to lose it. Oh, you know what? I can respect that, actually. I think I'm like gold it's... one or two or something, but I don't really care too much about it. So. Yeah, I'm, I, I reached plat and I'm like, I don't, I, I do not want to go back down. I opened no. up Overwatch just to see how many... I have 2,536. Uh, okay, that's not bad. That's, yeah, that's, that's not awful, good. yeah. Also, when I opened it up, it, it gave me the big thanks for your feedback. Somebody reported has been uh, some stuff has been taken against them or whatever it says. That's kind of awesome. Reported I can't even remember the last where? person I reported, but I, they probably yeah. were throwing or something. I guess I don't know. Um, because I don't I don't really report people very often. So, uh, all right, what we got here. We got. Your fresh start with placement matches. With both the changes to competitive play and the broader changes to gameplay starting the season, we feel this is a perfect opportunity for everyone to start fresh as they comp- compete on the ranked leaderboards. To accomplish this, we're reintroducing placement matches and resetting everyone's competitive skill rank. This is what I've wanted for a while. I wanted, a, I think, a full reset is exactly what this game needed, because there, like, there are people who, like, like you, for instance, like you play a lot of Overwatch and you play a lot of solo Overwatch. So you, you are you are plat, but it means that I can't play with you because you're plat. Actually, I think gold and plat maybe can play together. I don't remember that. But I do think a night a full reset is really good, um, and it won't it yeah. shouldn't take an account to anything from the past, so people can finally like play together. And I think I don't know if it was well, I guess speaking your journey to the top ten to the top begins with ten all new placement matches. With everyone's ranks re- being reset, these 10 placement matches provide you with a high-stakes opportunity to make big gains in determining your new starting rank. As you progress through placement matches, there will be a predicted starting rank after each match. 
You'll have only one chance this year to run your placement matches, so pick your best heroes and stay hydrated because these games count for a lot. So this is your placement for, I, I guess, until the next time they do a full rank reset, which they make it sound like they probably won't ever do or won't do for a really long time. Or they say one chance this year, so maybe they'll do a full placement every year. I don't, I don't know. Maybe because it's funny they they've they have never. I think they have never done this. Yeah, no, they never any did. Game. Yeah, I don't think for any for any year for any season. So this is this is big because like yeah. people who grinded like a high rank at the start of Overwatch two. Are still near that same MMR yeah. rating. Just there hasn't really been a chance rating. for, like the the opportunity for a new name to show up in like really high ranks is like pretty low right now. I think, yeah, like it's because... not it's not great. Like if you look at the top <laughs> five hundred or whatever from Overwatch One for DPS, it's probably basically the same people right now. Maybe they've their names have moved slight spots, but I feel like nothing has changed too much in that kind of a situation. Which I guess that's I mean, like high high level play, but I'm just saying like new players. Um, the funny thing is that if you do okay hmm. in your like first placement matches of the entire game, like with a new account, you can get like diamond or masters, or like, I think at least diamond. Oh yeah, if it's a brand new account, yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, so it's like. It's it's weird. I don't know yeah. why. It yeah, because it's got nothing way. to go off of, so it just throws you somewhere based on how much you're winning or losing. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like players who have had better games, but they have placed gold like two years ago, mm. are unfortunately still gonna be gold. Maybe yep. get to plat, but someone who had just like kind of lucky five games, uh, suddenly they're like masters and why yeah because i think the last time that i played ranked in overwatch one i was like gold something that was like the peak was like gold uh, four i think um and right now i'm like gold i believe it's gold two let me check where i'm at with tank because tank is the higher of the two i'm pretty sure um competitive oh i can't oh all competitive seasons Oh, that's time played. Can I see, like, my rank? Uh, okay, yeah. The last time I played tank in a ranked season and actually got a placement. Because for season 6 and season 7, I played, I played four tank games in season 7. And I played two in season 6. So the last time I actually played something in tank was season four where i got gold for in tank and i yeah, think like season one yeah season one was also gold for season three and four were gold for and season two was apparently silver two but i played a shit ton more damage that season apparently i played 32 games of damage and i played five games of tank and i got silver two that's interesting. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. I mean, that's because it's, it's it's rough ranking up in in Overwatch. I mean, especially because solo queuing just really sucks. But it's a really big like, team queued, game. I think in every single game that I played ranked in, mm. like Overwatch, Valorant, um, Apex, I got diamond in Apex <laughs> mm. a few times, like three times, I think. But it's not even about skill, because, like, you know that you have the skill, but it's mostly about time. Yeah. And, like, luck. Yeah, I like, can I could get... totally go higher. Like, like you are a high-placed player, and I, when, I, when I'm playing tank, I, I feel like it's not too far off of the skill level that you would see at your rank and things like that. And one of my friends, who is also one of Adri's friends... He's like a a plat tank as well, and we were playing a, a quick like a couple quick play games, and he was like, he was like, damn, what rank are you? And I was like, I think I'm like gold like three or, or something like that. I don't really play rank that much. And he was like, damn, you're good as fuck. Like you could like you don't look like a gold three tank. And I was like, thanks, but I don't really I don't really play ranked. I, it's, I, it's not a game mode that I currently feel like is worth really getting into. 
unless you have a full stack for it because it just gets really annoying but for me i don't like full stacking because um i feel like if it's different people then like what if a couple of people are worse <laughs> i mean that like, is that is true them. yeah i mean you definitely would want it it's like a it's like something you would definitely want to like set up ahead of time to be like this is the group that i play overwatch with and like i don't play with anyone else you know i definitely wouldn't just like full stack with like people that i like just met or whatever like i know it's like a thing that like i think some I, sometimes people have invited me to groups after games have ended and stuff like that they've been like we should all stay together and i usually say no to it unless the game went really really well because it could have just been a lucky game for them and then we can go into the next game and they just are bad and they we just start losing really hard really hard you know what i mean but yeah so then there's this new yeah there's a new rank so how high can you go we're introducing the ultimate rank champion this is the most prestigious tier above grandmaster intended to show who's the best among the most skilled players in the game even with the boost that placement matches can provide top ranking players will still need to win a lot of games to reach champion one and prove they are the best of the best, the best of the best, okay? This is the most exclusive rank in the history of Overwatch, and we're on the edge of our seats to see who will achieve such heights in Season 9 and beyond. So this is like a permanent rank. It's going to be there forever. It's kind of a cool name. Kind of like I'm... when they added um, Masters to Apex. Yeah, I don't, I don't really play Apex, but... Yeah, I mean, they're just adding another rank. I don't think... I think this will probably just be like a... Well, Top 500 has its own thing and stuff like that. So, is this above that? Or is this replacing that? I think it's actually below. Well, yeah, it says I it's above Grandmaster. It's above Grandmaster. Uh, and Grandmaster was under that. Under, like, Top 500 and stuff, I'm pretty sure. So, I guess oh, it's... I thought it's like... Isn't a... it? That's weird, okay. That's a yeah. choice. So I guess it'll be Grandmaster Champion and then Top 500 and stuff like that. So that'll be interesting. New new, new top rank for, like... I don't want to say casual enjoyers, because it's still really fucking high rank. But new top rank for, like, the average dude to get by playing Overwatch. And then Top 500 is still reserved for, like, the competitive players who are, like, constantly playing Overwatch and stuff like that. I would argue the average Overwatch player is silver, but... No, know. no, I meant, like, this is a new... I don't mean, like, the average, like, skill level. I meant, like, the average person who just gets on, plays some Overwatch, this is their new peak to hope to achieve instead of Grandmaster. It's now champion. I do wonder, because I think you need, like, 50 wins to get into either GM or the 500. Mm. Like, you need 50 competitive wins overall. Hmm. Interesting. So that's, I don't know. And I wonder how that'll if that'll change too much or things like that. But um, and then these new competitive rewards, the jade weapons. I don't like these. I don't think they look great. I, I think, think that... most people kind of hate these. I, I feel yeah. like out of all the colors that I could have chosen, green is like the most tacky one. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like they they show I th is this this is either tracer or mercy's gun. I think this is tracer's <coughs> gun. Pretty sure this yeah. is tracer's. Yeah. It actually looks pretty decent. I'm like okay with it, and I, I I will say, I actually do think Doomfist's fist looks pretty good in green, honestly, and I think it would match some of his skins really well. But overall, I think these are just a weird thing to add. I don't hate it. I'm not gonna sit here and be like this is the worst thing ever, blah blah blah. If they didn't do it the way that they did. The issue with this, for anybody who doesn't know, is Season 9 introduces Jade Weapon Variants, unlockable with the new 2024 competitive points. Earning Jade Weapon Variants will reflect your dedication to competitive play in 2024, not your highest rank achieved. Luckily, these new Jade Weapon Variants will not be as exclusive as the Champion rank. You will progress towards earning competitive points just by playing the game, with more progress granted towards wins. Competitive points earned for winning and drawing a match have been rebalanced around this new progression system, which should make every match feel rewarding regardless of the outcome. So, these legacy competitive points, through the end of Season 8, players can still earn competitive points towards unlocking Golden Weapon variants. When Season 9 starts, your previously oined, earned, or weaned, 
earned competitive points will be converted into legacy competitive points. The issue, the main issue that I have with this is they could have added jade weapons and it could have been fine. There could have been no problems. They could have just existed and been cool and people would get them if they wanted them instead of a gold gun. The issue now is the competitive money that you get from the net from season nine and beyond can only be used on a jade weapon. And if you want to get a gold gun, you have to wait until the end of the year. It's sounding like, um, with some of the other stuff that we read and some of the stuff that we already saw, you have to wait until basically the end of the year, not even the end of the season. It's making it sound like it's, you have to wait a whole year for those points to transfer into money that you can use to get a gold gun. So, you can't actually get a gold gun right away once you've reached the money. Once you reach the money, you have to then wait a year for the money to turn into gold gun money, and then you can buy a gold gun. So, they've pushed gold guns to something that they don't really want people to buy anymore, and they want people to buy these jade weapons now. I think that's stupid. Gold guns are like a staple of Overwatch. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I agree what do you mean? everything that you just said. What do you mean? Um, I, I think I said it before, but the thing is, a lot of, I, I would say most players that have played this game for, I would say, I don't know, every day, maybe like every, a couple of times a week, since mm. like, I don't know, for like years, probably have um, thousands, upon, thousands upon thousands of competitive points on top of having all of the gold guns in the game. Because, like, when you play a lot of competitive, and I don't mean, like, a lot, a lot, I would say, like, a couple of games a day, maybe, you rack up those points really quickly. Um, so I think what they try to avoid is people being able to just buy all of the all of the jade weapons for all of the characters, again, simply because they had, like, enough points, like, leftover points. I don't think, uh, it, because it's like such a big reset, I think it's a good thing that they're also resetting your progress towards the weapons, because they want everyone to be on like the same, uh, start from like the same point. They don't want anyone, they don't want anyone to have like a, an advantage over them. Because like what's stopping a streamer who uh, plays, I don't know, eight hours a day, every single day, or like even someone who has just simply played the game since like I don't know 2016, 2017, 2018, um, to simply buy all the weapons and like they would instantly lose this kind of novelty value, I guess. I um, guess I can see so where you're coming from on that. Yeah, it's 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 definitely better like this. Granted, the weapons are ugly as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but... <laughs> I get what you're saying with the if if they made it the same currency, people would just be able to buy a shit ton of, like all of them, and then they would lose all of their special value for those people because they would just have all of them. But I I think my main issue with it is it's replacing gold guns in that spot, and they're moving gold guns to like a spot where they like. They're they're putting gold guns in like a timeout corner. They don't want anyone to look at it. They're putting a sheet over it. They're like, oh, forget the gold guns. Check out these jade guns. But if it, they make you wait a whole year, I mean, hopefully this isn't actually a year and somebody just and it's like being uh, exaggerated or something. But waiting a whole year no, just to get a gold gun. Like, oh, it is like a hundred percent. Oh, it's right. Oh, you'll be able to use legacy competitive points to unlock gold weapon variants, but the way you receive legacy competitive points will change. Once the 2024 competitive year closes, any leftover 2024 competitive points will automatically be converted and added to your legacy competitive points, which can be used to unlock gold and weapon variants. Okay. So they literally said that you have to wait a whole fucking year to get a gold gun. Okay. Yeah. But also, um, I feel like, the way they're phrasing this makes me feel like they're they're gonna introduce more weapons, like more weapons. That would be cool. I, I'm if if they make more stuff and they look good, then cool. I don't change my stance that I think gold guns are a staple of the Overwatch game, and I think making making people wait a year to get the biggest rewarded that you can in Overwatch is kind of weird. Like gold guns are like a a staple of Overwatch. Like I think it's like the only hero shooter that I can think of where like you get a like a golden variant of your weapon for for playing the game enough, you know what I mean? Like I don't even think like paladins or anything like that had stuff like that. 
I think they, they had did. well, they had like diamond skins and stuff like that. So I guess they, they kind of they the did same have thing, golden but... weapons that were, um, I think, level fifty or sixty on the character, hmm. which I feel like is a much better idea than golden guns in Overwatch. I would, I will, I will go on the record and say that. I mean, debatably so because um, the gold skins in Paladins are always just the gold variant of the. Of default the default. Skin. Smite has the same thing. Um, they have gold and diamond and stuff like that. Yeah, but also people who have a lot of competitive points can just like buy a gold gun for a completely new character that they have never played before because the character just came out. Mm. Um, and I feel like that, that takes away from this like feeling of accomplishment because you're like, oh my god, I, you know, like for example, you, you don't have enough competitive points right now. You want to get it and then you want to get it for Romatro, who's like your main character that you played right. and you you're gonna feel accomplished because like a, a character that you played a lot right you have mm. like this attachment to them you have this mastery over them true. um true. but like other people are little, people are just gonna you know get it because they can even though they never played a single game of this character ever I mean, before that is true if it was like a if it was like a paladin desk thing i probably would have the golden skin or diamond skin for Ramatra already because of how much time I've put into him. But, I don't know. I do still think gold guns are a staple. And it's weird to make people wait a whole year for it. I think it would be better if at the end of the season there was like an option to convert your money into gold gun money. The question is, um, will they... I mean, this goes back to me... Um, wondering if they're gonna make more weapon variants yeah. later on, but um, are if they will, will they like move the the jade weapons into like the 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 pool with the gold guns, or will they will, like will they keep just adding new weapon variants every single year, and you know make them like the novelty thing, and then once the year ends, they just like retire it what what game does that i think a game there's a game that does that i don't know kind what of. Game would do that, but... oh it's kind of like it reminds me of, it would remind me of like heirlooms from apex oh, I, never, like, I never i don't even have a single heirloom i stopped playing apex before they even got added <laughs> it's been since the game came out but <laughs> oh well all right i never knew they existed when i stopped playing but yeah um uh, but like there's collection events um, and they they last for like two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and during those events you can only buy this heirloom for real money. <laughs> hmm. um, okay. And then right. after the event ends, if you get um like the heirloom shards from a pack, or if you had some left over, mm -hmm. um because you were I don't know saving them up or something, you can then buy that thing from the event, like the heirloom. But like okay. you know people who, uh. When you see during the event people who have the heirloom, you're like, oh my god, they, they're idiots <laughs> because they spent like real money on it when they get it for free, right? On the fucking weapon skin. Hmm. Like Two hundred dollars is kind of crazy. I know that fucking death box is like five hundred or some shit. It was like I think three sixty, three forty, ah, something which like that. Is insane, but I think there are uh, cosmetics yeah. in Dota that cost more i think at one point i saw something that was like 800 bucks yeah but also that's because of their like rarity, rarity and stuff yeah because it's like a, yeah. a community like a steam, store steam marketplace marketplace thing yeah so some skins cost like 50 cents yeah yes yeah, yeah it's exactly some things cost like five cents and shit yeah um, yeah so that that's what the if they do add um like weapons weapon variant cycling every year that's kind of what that would remind me of because fe like seeing people with jade weapons during this year will be like oh my god they grinded jade weapons like for this character mm -hmm. this year and yeah. then you know they won't be you won't be able to like stock up on them for all characters right you'll have to like pick and I... choose wisely like who you play most yeah if every year they make a new variant that that could be cool, cause then like you know, in like two years or whatever, I could, we could see somebody with a jade weapon, and we could be like, whoa, they have a jade weapon. That's kind of cool. Like you can't really get that anymore. You know, now we've got, I don't know, quartz weapons or whatever the fuck. 
but as long as they don't get rid of the old ones like i, w- I wouldn't want to see it in like two years it's like wow that person is a gold gun it's crazy because you can't even get those anymore like that i, I everything should still be attainable i don't think anything should be removed i mean but... yeah i mean i think they will simply add the jade weapons to the pool of weapons that you can buy for the legacy credits yeah with their legacy points but like they won't be as rare because you can just like buy them for every character because i don't know you have like a billion competitive points like the old points right I mean, yeah, but I, you have I can work see that, for I the guess. newer ones. Yeah, I can see that. I guess it's yeah. If this is like them starting to make new weapon variants, then I think it could be cool. I I, I could I could see that. I guess being cool. Um, yeah, but yeah. I do think also, Jade is like a weird one. And, and like uh, yeah, you definitely want to play the game. Yeah, like the game realistically will have game, yeah, it'll have a harder time dying out if every year there's a new thing to attain. You know. Um, yeah, because right now I'm, I can be like, uh, I don't feel like playing ranked this season. I can just play it next season. Yeah. Or like some other time. I don't have to worry about like grinding the competitive points. But like when they, if they do cycle out at the end of like 2024, uh, then I can be like, oh my god, I have to, you know, play some ranked yeah. to get this, to get this yeah, for yeah. this character. And that makes sense. Honestly, but... I, I keep thinking what. What character would benefit from a from a jade gun? And I think it's just maybe Genji and Lucio, because also like it's such an ugly shade of green. I think it's like it be like neon, it would be better. I'm pretty sure Doomfist has like I don't remember what it's called. Let me let me take a look real fast. I don't remember uh, what it's called. Orissa and maybe the there's the triad skin for Widow. Um, Doomfist has a skin. I think it's uh, not caution. It's the other color of caution um Erin? yeah Erin is like silver and green and the fist yeah, is already green so like that could yeah. work and i do think um ramatra actually might be pretty good with it especially with the skin that i use biohazard because it's got yeah. green already going on that's so. what, that's what i mean i wish it wasn't like this kind of foresty green i wish i wish it was more like a like a neon green kind of like yeah like the tubes on this skin yeah, it's a little, I don't know, it's a little weird looking. I don't, like, like I, 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 I hate it that it, that it put, it makes me feel like they're going to replace gold guns with it and gold guns will, will inevitably be dying out. I don't like the way that they're, that they were doing it, but I guess they kind of have to do it this way. Like you said, if it was the same money, then people would just buy shit to other jade guns and they would mean nothing. But I mean, I would argue that this makes, to a degree, gold guns um rarer more rare. yeah but it means that like before this happens people who really want to get a gold gun they have to grind out ranked right now like they have to grind it out in the next couple of days before this comes out because if this comes out and they don't have enough points then they have to wait until 2025 to actually get the gold gun like for me it's like i'm pretty close to getting a ramatra gold gun but if i don't get it within these uh, four days, I think, before this comes out, I then have to wait until 2025 to get my gold gun for my favorite character. Yeah. Which I, I think is the is the issue. I think they should make it so that it's a, you have a choice to convert it to this new one or not. Yeah, I feel like there should be like a... Like the... When you go into like the hero gallery, you have like the plus next to your... Yeah. Of watch coins if you want to buy them. That should be like next to the competitive points and if you want to convert them to these yeah because i after i get a gold gun for ramatra i don't really care too much i'll happily just switch to this new one and move on but for people who are super close to getting a gold gun this is going to drop right in their face they're going to lose all of that and then they can't get a gold gun anymore they have to either get this jade gun or wait until 2025 which i think is really unfair yeah this is why um, this is why I, I, I don't know. I, I don't really, I don't really like the jade weapon. So I, I'll, I won't be like, oh my God. I, I think I have like all the, I wouldn't say all the gold guns for like all the characters that I play, but the most important one. So for me, it's like whatever, but mm-hmm. I, I feel like they will change it. I feel like they, if people, um, moan and whine and bitch enough about it they will change it 
And I'll happily moan, whine, and bitch enough for me to get a gold gun. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't. I don't mind if, like you said, they want to do this like every every year. They want to make a new weapon variant thing. I think that's cool, and it'll keep the game alive. But I don't think it's fair that you're forcibly changing money that people have grinded for to something that people may not be interested in anymore. You know, like if, if somebody didn't like a gold gun, they just didn't play ranked. But if somebody wanted a gold gun, then they would play ranked because they wanted a gold gun. But then this is I mean, going to drop and make them jade weapons now. I mean, they're going to play. Ranked either way. I don't think anyone, maybe besides you, plays ranked for the weapons. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people who are like, I really want a gold gun, so I have to play ranked. So I'll play ranked to get the gold gun. I I feel like there are actually a lot of people who are playing it just for that. Mm. I I could be wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong. I will. I I like Overwatch a lot, and I'm. I feel like I'm pretty good at Overwatch. So I, I. like playing ranked because I would like to go up in the ranks, but my main motivation to play ranked is because I want gold guns for my characters that I actually like really like and I, I care about. So I guess the ranking up system of ranked is actually more of like an extra fun thing, whereas the golden guns are like really what I'm what I'm achieving for, I guess. But I do think these jade weapons so yeah, some characters they might look really nice on, but at the end of the day, it's still just a cosmetic thing to grind for, but I, I think taking away what some people might really want of gold guns and making them jade and then you have to wait even longer to get a gold gun is a little unfair. I think you should give people the option to uh, change the money over. Because yeah, as soon as you open the game, like once Season 9 starts, once you open the game, it's going to immediately transfer all of this money into uh, this new jade money. And I think that's kind of unfair. You're not even going to give people the chance to like log in and buy something before it happens, you know? Yeah. Uh, what do you got here? Starting in Season 9, competitive challenges that grant bonus competitive points are also changing. Season 8 will be the last season to claim end-of-season competitive challenges for Season 1 to 7. Okay. I don't really... That's kind of... I mean, unless there's, like, cosmetic... I don't actually know what any of the challenges are. I really don't look at them that much. Um, uh, let but, me see. Yeah. I think they're, like... Hold on. Competitive. They're... Oh, okay. Mm. <clears throat> they're just... um. They're just points. Oh, all right, all right then. I think. I mean, you, right. can, you can get titles. Yeah, okay. Um, People might care about that then, yeah. And also... Yeah, it's mostly mostly titles and, like, mm. mystery heroes. Competitive gotcha. mystery heroes. I, I think it's... They want to... Like, this is, like... They said already they're doing a hard competitive reset, like a ranked reset. But I think what they also want to do, along with a rank reset, is a full 100% competitive reset. Everything. They want to just they want to make a very clear division from seasons one to seven, and and seasons nine and onwards. They want to make this a really big, like very obvious split, like right here at this moment, competitive change forever basically and then this is continuing it so i think that's just their goal here with you know the new jade weapons and these challenges and things like that um so it's unfortunate for people who can't get these done um i can't say anything strong uh emotionally about this because i never really cared about the challenges but for people who care about the challenges obviously this this sucks i would imagine they feel the same about this the way that i feel about the golden guns um Log in before the end of Season 8 to grab any rewards from Season 7 or earlier that you haven't claimed yet. Once Season 9 begins, you will be unable to receive past competitive points for completed competitive challenges from Season 7 or earlier. You'll still be able to claim your Season 8 rewards during Season 9, but you must log in to receive them that time before... Th- th- that bonus before the end of Season 9. Okay, I mean, that makes sense, I guess. Um, interesting changes to core gameplay. This shit could be fun. <laughs> Uh, uh, I got a BRB for a sec. All right. Yeah, go I'll on. keep going. Yeah, I think you yeah, Vez already looked at these, so we'll move we'll on. Um, beyond the competitive rework, season nine features major changes to the fundamentals of Overwatch Two gameplay that affect every hero. We've heard the community feedback around some gameplay pain points and developed changes to the core gameplay with these goals in mind. Deliver a more consistent feel to firing and landing your shots on your opponent. Uh, lessen the impacts of burst damage to allow for greater counterplay. Adjust where in-game healing and damage are effective to reduce stagnant teamfights. So, uh, I think 
what they mean by this is for anybody who doesn't know um one of the things that they said they're changing and i think is literally what's going to be go holy shit what's going to be going up the fuck going on over here what's going to be going on down here um is I, I think they said they're making all of the projectiles bigger everyone's projectile is going to be bigger um if your character doesn't benefit from projectile size there's going to be other changes to them um i believe is, is something that i saw people talking about um so you know for anybody who is annoyed by hanzo like myself uh hanzo's gonna shoot you even easier now because uh, i guess he wasn't annoying enough he needed a buff i guess um that's the impacts of burst damage to allow for greater counterplay so i guess if you take too much damage in a single instance maybe it'll be reduced I, I don't really know what the hell this means to be honest lessens the impact of burst damage to allow for greater counterplay i don't know i don't really know what that one is um and then adjust where in-game healing and damage are effective to reduce stagnant team fights so i think everyone's gonna do more damage but i think also everyone gets more health in this update so i'm not really sure everything should be pretty normal although i do know there's a new dps uh passive which i actually think is pretty cool um all these changes have been designed to work in combination to balance each other out, and we're excited for you to get in game and experience them all at once. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, making your shots feel good to hit. One of our main goals with these adjustments is to make firing your weapons and abilities feel more consistent without impacting the time to eliminate a target, and without removing the overall feel of gameplay we all know and love. When examining how burst damage values have changed over time, we found that in most cases they've gone down in raw value, though that may not necessarily mean that they became weaker relative to other changes. The 5v5 environment and the new Heroes of Overwatch 2 certainly factor into the perspective, but it's often overlooked that the player's base, base's average skill level, game knowledge, and pace of gameplay are relatively higher now than when the game first launched. I mean, yeah, that's pretty true. But I think... The thing that's weird about this is that they're saying that the average player is better now. They're saying that they think the average player is better now than when the game first came out, which, yeah, I mean, the game's been out long enough. When a game is out a long time, people get better at it. That's just kind of logic. But they're making the projectiles bigger, which means it's easier to hit people. So wouldn't you actually be making it easier to play the game? If you if you think that everyone's skill is really high and you're you're you know you're aware that most your average players are are really are better at the game now, why would you need to make the projectiles bigger? Um, is 0.05 meters for hit scan projectiles with a high rate of fire or spread? Tracers, pulse pistols, or Reapers, Hellfire shotgun. Meters for hit scan projectiles that are precise. Peacekeeper, soldier 76, pulse rifle. Travel time projectiles that are shotguns or very high rate of fire, scrap gun, Ramatra's Void Accelerator. So they'll move faster, a little bit faster. Uh, travel time projectiles with a speed greater than 50 meters per second. Zenyatta's Orb. Meters for travel time projectile. Okay, so these are honestly just like numbers and shit, but I think everything is getting slightly bigger and or slightly faster. Um... When it, came to, when it comes to aiming as a mechanical skill requirement, even players with excellent aim often mention how it can feel random whether shots hit or not. I don't really think that has anything to do with the projectile size. I think that has to do with servers and internet and things like that. But uh, maybe it's a side thing. I can tell you right now that there have been a lot of times where I've looked at a kill cam of me getting headshot in quotations by like a Hanzo or whatever, and I, that arrow is nowhere near me, but whatever. Um, I don't think that has anything to do with the size of the shot. If anything, it needs to get smaller, not bigger. But due largely in part to the whip speed movement acceleration heroes have when changing directions combined with all the dashing leaping teleporting abilities hitting your target can be very difficult crisp responsive movement is important to the core gameplay feel so we wouldn't want to just slow down player movement and player movement um which i think is good this is not a good way to like change your game is to make everybody slower i think movement is a is a really fun thing to have in like a hero shooter um one of the things i did like a lot about paladin's to be fair, there weren't really a lot of things that I liked about Paladins, but it did a couple good things. Um, one of them that I really liked was that everybody's got a movement ability, no matter what. Uh, one of the characters that I played a lot in Paladins, um, for anybody who plays Paladins, um, Yagareth, who is a tank. She's like a big fucking like worm thing. She literally can't move. Um, she has to go in. She has to curl herself up into a wheel, basically, and then she rolls along the ground and then she can move somewhere and then when you when you end that ability she uncoils and she sets herself back up and she cannot move when she's in that form she can only look around and, and shoot and she like spits she like shoots like acid breath at stuff and things like that 
Um, she like shoots acid out of her mouth and things like that. Um, and she has like spikes and stuff. But when she's curled up in a ball, all of her abilities change. And one of them is like she can dash really, really fast. And if she hits anything, she like knocks them into the air and does damage and stuff like that. So like even somebody who's literal whole thing is sitting on a payload and not being able to move and shooting things and essentially just being a, a turret uh, that's a tank still has a fucking movement ability like everybody was able to move in that game and i think it's really cool um that is fun it does make it really hard to hit people in that game though because everybody's moving abilities but i do think that's more paladin's game fault they could have uh done more things about that but i think high res is kind of moving on from caring about paladins i think they care more about smite now which I am most might is the better game, but whatever. Um, we're not talking about smite though. We're talking about Overwatch. Uh, instead, we're improving hit consistency by making both damage dealing hit scan and travel time projectiles larger. Uh, heroes that have weapons or abilities that don't benefit from any projectile sizes will receive an additional balance changes. Okay, so that's what I was saying before. Yeah. However, we don't want to make too many hero adjustments before getting a better understanding of the effects of the initial changes. So tune in for more on individual heroes in future updates. So, okay, I mean, project, some projectiles are going to get bigger, and people who don't benefit from projectile size things um, will get something else. Uh, you know, uh, something like Reinhardt, obviously, he doesn't have a projectile. Well, I guess Firestrike counts as a projectile. I don't know if they're going to increase the size of Firestrike. I think increasing the size of Firestrike would be crazy, but who knows? I, if they do, then whatever. Reinhardt gets a big old, big old buff, which I think he is okay with because Reinhardt is kind of needing of some buffs low key, but you know, um, speaking of Reinhardt, since we're increasing the average accuracy of nearly all heroes and want to keep time to kill similar, we're also increasing everyone's maximum health. Okay. So yeah, we've already balanced damage values, damage boosts, critical damage, breakpoints, and other factors around 200 and 250 HP heroes. So the new health ends up requiring at least one more hit from most heroes to eliminate an enemy. Okay. So yeah, it's not going to change. Everyone's getting more health. But everyone's also doing more damage. So we're really not um, worrying too much about time to kill. Everyone gets a little bit tankier, but also everyone does a little bit more damage. And it's a little bit easier to hit people. So realistically, none of this matters. You're just going to see a bigger number on your health bar. But it should probably feel the same. Um, that being said, 300 HP tanks plus on tanks increased by 75 to 100 HP. So... I think I heard somebody saying that... Oop, I thought I could highlight that for some reason. Um, I think I saw... I don't remember if it was Flats, because I, I do remember I watched a little bit of a Flats TikTok um, before I actually started streaming up, like two hours ago or something like that, I think. Um, uh, somebody was saying that I think Ryan will have like 700 health now or something. Um, but it's kind of sick. Good for him. Um, it's pretty awesome. Ramatra also can get more health. Um, Ramatra should... Uh, uh, I am Obro. Ramatra should have 8 trillion health. Um, there's definitely no bias there. It's definitely not me being a Ramatra man, and I want Ramatra to have 8 trillion health. I, I definitely think he just definitely needs that. And then when he goes into Nemesis form, I think it needs to be infinite. I think he just needs to not ever lose health ever again. Um, good buff. Uh, Blizzard should hire me, definitely. Um, Alright, giving more reliance in Team Fist. We also want to make sure that the flow of the team doesn't take away from the individual player's decision. I believe this is talking about changes to size will burst damage and tones down the relevant to healing, meaning it will longer it will take longer to heal someone from one HP to full health. To ease the friction of an increased time to fully heal allies out of combat and enable support players to make more informed decisions about who to heal. Everyone can now regenerate health passively at a rate of twenty healing per second after five seconds of not taking damage. And support roll passive now has been adjusted to 2.5. So supports start passively healing faster, and tanks and DPS um, also now passively regenerate health when out of combat. Um, I think this is going to be really good for the game, because after a team fight, your Moira, for instance, let's say she's healing you, and then she runs out of heal. Her, her bar is empty, she has no more healing, and there's nobody around to damage, so she can't make it go faster. Yes, she could throw an orb at you, and currently, she would be expected to throw an orb at you, especially if you're the tank. Actually, almost exclusively for the tank. Using an ability just to heal a DPS might not be great. Um, in case you get jumped or somebody jumps to Moira and she needs help. And now she doesn't have orb to help her do damage to fend off the Tracer or the Sombra or whatever. Um, 
or throw an orb at like a Widowmaker or an Ash who's like peeking a window or something. Um, I think this will be good because now when you run out of heal on somebody like a Moira or Ana needs to reload and she really doesn't want to have to throw nade at the tank just to heal them up to full or whatever. Um, now she can kind of, you know, Moira doesn't have, she can heal as much health as she can. And then when it's on cooldown or when Ana's reloading or Mercy needs to single target heal somebody else, the other person can start passively regenerating. And I think that will help support, uh, kind of like keep track of their cooldowns better. You know, your, your more important cooldowns will be saved for your fight. I don't I mean, think... this is... Oh, yeah, hello, this is more for, like, hello. <laughs> hello. It's more for, like, out of combat. It's not really, yeah. like... Yeah, it won't take effect in a fight. A fight. Yeah. yeah, like, it's not going to be, like, a thing where, like, oh, I got Reinhardt to half health, but he put his shield up, so now he's just going to start healing. It's like, no, I mean, just just shoot him. Just go around the shield and shoot him. Like, if he's in combat, he's, he can't heal. Even if you hit him for one damage, it resets the five-second timer for him to start healing again. Um... But like I was saying, I don't know if you, I don't know how long you had been here if you were listening all the time. But I was saying I think this is good, the healing passive because it'll yeah, let right. it'll let people save their cooldowns, and it'll take some stress off of supports in between fights. Obviously during fights it's going to be exactly the same, um, but I do think out of fights, in between team fights and things like that, I think supports will <clears throat> enjoy this. And like somebody like a soldier doesn't even really need his E at all. He he can use it in a team fight. 100% of the time, because out of a team fight, he can just heal himself passively. Like, everyone will just heal. Um, so, yeah, I think this will be good. I'm a fan of this. Um, I don't think this is some fucking... What was that thing that people were complaining about? They were saying that they think Overwatch is becoming Call of Duty now because everyone can heal or something like that. Um, yeah, guys, hate to break it to you, but I think you might have brain damage if you think that. Um... Obviously, this is not going to make Overwatch Call of Duty. Uh, Overwatch is still Overwatch. Um, you're telling me you get out of combat for five seconds? Five seconds is a, is a pretty long time. In Overwatch right now, I think five seconds is like the amount of time it takes to like kill somebody completely. So if you're out of... Let's say your DPS is like runs off to go heal for five seconds. Somebody else is going to die in those five seconds. Like, guaranteed. This is not something you can run off and heal in them in during a fight. Something like a Widowmaker, or like an Ash, or somebody in the back line, they might be able to take advantage of this a little bit more. Because if they get jumped, and... Like, for instance, I'll be playing Widowmaker, and let's say a Sombra uh, jumps me, and I kill the Sombra, but I'm at, like, 20 health. Normally, I would have to ask my healer to leave the team fight and heal me. Or I would have to leave my sniper spot to go to the healer to get healed. Now I don't have to do that. I could just stay where I am and relax for a second. I'll heal, and then I can go back to shooting. Or in the time it takes me to line up a shot, it may be, uh, like a, it may be like three seconds, and then, you know, the two seconds of, like, going back to my spot after fighting and everything, and I'll, I'll start healing while I line up my shot. So something like a sniper, I think, actually is pretty okay with this. And, I mean, there are definitely some DPS that might enjoy this, but at the end of the day, I don't think this is really breaking the game in any serious way. Um, and I think this is going to be okay, and I like this. And this, is a, this is a change that when I saw that, that leaked one, we, me and you were talking about it as we were talking about this, I think this is going to be really good for the game, and I think um, it's a good change, and I'm kind of surprised that it took so long to get here. But this was another one of the things. I was talking about Paladins before, how I like that everybody in Paladins has a movement ability, because um, they were talking about uh, how they wanted to make projectile sizes bigger because they didn't want to nerf movement speed of characters and i was saying that i think that's a good thing that paladins does is that everybody can move like all the time like movement in paladins feels really good and i think that's a good thing to keep in a hero shooter is movement um so this is another good thing is that paladins also has a passive heal and i think overwatch also getting a passive heal is pretty good uh Increase the health pools and weakening of burst damage means that heroes live longer in team fights and will take longer to and team fights will take longer to conclude. To combat some of the potentially extreme situations there, we've also introduced a new damage passive, empowering them more easily to fulfill their role in securing eliminations, reduce in combat healing, and potentially add an additional strategic layer to focus firing targets. So the everybody gets the twenty health per second after not taking damage for five seconds. Supports get it after uh, after half the time, so they get it after 2.5 seconds. Um, so if you jump a healer and you don't kill them, they're probably going to regen. But 
you know, if it's somebody like a Moira who's doing damage, yeah, she probably won't regen because she's still going to be throwing an orb and the orb will bounce all over the place and things like that. Um, but if they're, it's like a Mercy or whatever, if you don't kill that Mercy, she is probably going to get back to full health. But she's a healer, so, you know, it's kind of makes sense that the healer is able to sustain themselves a little bit. Um, and then the damage roll passive. Dealing damage reduces a target's healing received by 20%. Um, I'm okay with this, but the issue that I'm seeing with this is that we don't see how long it lasts for. Is it just 20% healing as they're taking damage? Like, as soon as you stop damaging them, do they, do they start getting full healing again? Or does it last for a couple of seconds? Like, I don't know. It doesn't say anywhere on here. Yeah, because that's the end of the thing right there. It just says that dealing damage reduces the healing received by 20%. So I guess while they're taking damage, they will heal less. But is it just, like, like, I don't know if it's like soldier shooting the Farah and then her healing <laughs> is reduced. And then soldier stops shooting her so that he can reload and then she gets back to full health during the reload because she's no longer reduced healing. Like, what is the duration on this debuff? We don't know yet. I think something like three seconds is probably pretty okay. Three seconds, five seconds, something like that. I mean, 20% is pretty big. It means that if Far Mercy is one of the most annoying fucking combos in the entire game. If you shoot the Farah, that Mercy basically doesn't exist anymore. You could just kill the Farah now. Is basically what, um, what this is saying to me, at least. Um, and I think something like a Sojourn, like, like, you jump a Sojourn and she's getting pocketed by, like, two fucking healers. It happens, like, literally all the time. The You shoot the Sojourn and now she's taking less healing, so she's more likely to die. I think it's the thing. I think that's what also could this do, is that let's say you, I'm playing Tracer or whatever. Or actually, you're playing Tracer, because you really play Tracer, Vez. I don't really play Tracer yeah. that much. You jump a Sojourn who's getting pocketed by a Mercy. You shoot the Sojourn. I think in currently and in the past and things like that before this change which this change is not out, not out yet obviously um the the mercy would just continue healing the sojourn because she has no reason not to i feel like now what'll happen though since they're already going to get less healing anyway i feel like i don't know this could just be that i i don't i don't really play support that much but i feel like the mercy's just going to go well fuck it they aren't getting healed right and just take out the pistol and start shooting at you also um, I feel like that's entirely possible, but I think it makes the game a little bit more fun regardless. Um, something like Zen Orb is actually probably going to suck from this, because as soon as somebody starts taking damage, your orb is literally going to do no healing at all, because it's already not that much. Uh, so you might as well just take your orb off of somebody getting hurt and put it on somebody else. But, I mean, we really just don't have a duration for it. That's the real, like, main issue, is we don't know how long it's going to last for it. Um, and hopefully this doesn't become Paladin's Cauterize, where, wh what is it, if you go into, like, the last round of a Paladin's game, I, I think Cauterize is, like, 85% reduced healing or something like that. Um, which is fucking insane and awful, and I really hope that doesn't ever happen. If it just is 20% flat for the entire game, I think that's fine. Um, I guess Paladin's kind of has to make it like that, because you can have, like, you can upgrade your cards and stuff to, like, have more health and get more healing and things like that but i think if you upgraded rejuvenate i think is what it's called the one where you receive more healing i think if you upgraded that like twice it would undo 20 percent uh anti-heal but don't know i think i think it's a pretty good change though what are you thinking what do you think vesington do you have anything to anything to add we will see that's you, you know what i respect that that's like that's a that's a good thing i mean it's literally just we don't know how long it'll last, so we will have to see if it's... If they make it, like, a 10-second duration, then I think it's going to be really bad, but... You know, if it's just, like, a 3-second duration or 2-second duration or something like that, I think it's okay. But I think it'll make a lot of annoying combos. Um, pocketed Sojourn, pocketed uh, Far Mercy, stuff like that, I think it's just going to be um, worse. Uh, we're not... Yeah, I think those combos will be worse, and I think that will be better for the game as a result. Um, healers will be more interested in uh, actually healing their whole team instead of just two people 
in the back line or something like that. Uh, all right. And then the last sentence here, at its core, Overwatch 2 is a competitive game, so it's important for the core systems and competitive system to be as intuitive and accessible as possible. In addition to these core system changes, we're introducing reworks to Farah and Junkertown. I was just talking about Farm Racing, so that's kind of cool. Which we'll go into later into a later blog. For now, let us know what you think when Overwatch 2 Season 9 Champions launches on February 13th. Junkertown getting changed is interesting. I actually don't mind Junkertown right now. I think it's kind of alright. So I'm interested in what they'll change. I know, I heard some stuff saying that they want to put more, like, debris or something like that in that, like, first point, like, where the gate opens up and you, like, actually enter Junkertown. Um, they want to put, like, more stuff in front of it so that it's, like, harder for snipers to just have, like, flat land to shoot at people. Like, there's actually going to be more cover and things like that. Um, which I guess that's fine. But I, I don't think Junkertown needs to get, like, super changed. Um, Farah, I think, was also in that like leaked pack notes or something where she's basically not going to be able to fly forever. She's only going to be able to like actually get her fuel back when she's on the ground. So she's going to have to land at some point And then that's kind of the moment that you want to kill her anyways, if that's, that's true. I mean, all of the other leaked stuff is literally right in front of us. So I'd have to assume all of it is true, but we, in the words of the wise Sir Vesington, uh, we shall 